Often the fluoride was in our water. A lot of people didn't even know that. A lot of people had no idea they were drinking our day. This is way, you know, major war going on in Northern Ireland about it. And whilst the troubles were going on, I mean, interestingly, it's the one thing that brought all parties together. They all agreed, no way, we're not taking this. And of course now, Death and War has shown us the cancer maps, the Irish cancer maps. I mean, we have much, much higher cancer mortality in the south than the north. It's really disturbing to see. You can literally see uh, along the border in Northern Ireland, you can see the cancer you know, rates dramatically increasing as soon as you go to the border in 18 different cancers. And actually that information, the, the expert body has tried to dismiss <coughs> that information, but it comes from the government who's basing, that's from a government study, you know, that, that we have that, that, that mortality. I mean, we have the highest disease burdens in Europe in most diseases. And there's no doubt that fluoride, fluoride is implicated because it, it is implicated in all these diseases. Anyway, so Northern Ireland successfully booted the fluoridation in the South and it took a lot. And it, um, there was a company called Shorts. Thanks, Ash. Um, I won't, I won't want to lie on that, of course. There was a company called Shorts, which are an aerospace a company that makes airplanes and stuff like that. Northern Ireland. Very, very important to the economy. And they threatened, when they found out about it, they actually threatened to withdraw from Northern Ireland because fluoride, the fluoride ion binds with heavy metals and they were welding underwater. And they would have literally had to put a massive RO filter. You know, they would have had to become a water treatment plant before they could go on making their machinery because they have to weld underwater. Everything would have just like, it would have bound the aluminium of the, of the, of the airplane wings and the welding wouldn't have happened. So that really swung it in the north as well but they are constantly trying to bring it back in the north. Um, you know, in the, in the mid, again, in, in around 2006, um, there, um, you know, it, it, I think it was Paisley and, um, I mean, there, there, was a, there was a huge, again, a Ferrari around 2006 in Northern Ireland with, you know, it was big news that they were all joining together. They're all writing, like all the signatories, there are lots of signatories on this letter from across um, all the political parties. We never heard about it. It was very big news and it was suppressed here. Um, just to go on, in 2006, um, again, uh, John Gorman, 2006-2007, as the Greens got some power, they tried to tackle it. And John Gormley wrote an absolutely brilliant report. I mean, it's 80 pages long. It's one of the best and most concise reports written about summarising all the problems with fluoride. And he, he wrote that as part of a, a, a government committee. He was, you know, Commission to write that, and that was suppressed. That was actually suppressed as well. One of the worst um, examples of real skullduggery and, um, you know, fraudulence, scientific fraudulence and deceit, hiding of information, it has to do with the uh, Food Safety Authority of Ireland. Now that group, you know, that group should just be run out of town because they are not doing their job. And far from, uh, they're not just not doing their job. They're absolute propagandists. They're, they're, they 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 apolo they're apologists for fluoride, and they're, they are forcing it down our necks just as much as the expert body on fluoride and health are. And I really look to the FSAI. I really recommend that everybody goes and clicks on and has a look at who's in the FSAI. Get their faces and get their names. Start contacting them and telling them, telling them you know what they're doing. Because okay, here here's what they've done. In 2001 as part of the forum on fluoridation. They, the, the FSAI um, were, became alarmed because since the mid-90s, mid there's been an increasing amount of scientific information showing that uh, infants, especially infants under four months who were being bottle-fed, were being massively and dangerously overexposed to fluoride. There's hard, irrefutable evidence for that. In fact, they're getting seven times the safe, le the safe limit. Now, we're having an explosion in the population of ADHD, autism. I myself have got an autistic son with very bad dental fluorosis. I've only begun talking about that because I didn't want people to think I had some, I had some kind of axe to grind. But I have no doubt that auti his autism has been exacer at least exacerbated by the fluoride he's come in contact with. Um, so in 2001, one group, one group of people in the Food Safety Authority of Ireland actually took this on, and they investigated uh, baby, babies drinking fluoridated formula milk, and they came to the, their report stated, which they handed into the forum on fluoridation, their report, their 25 page report, said it is unsafe for babies to be drinking formula milk fluoridated tap water. Now in Ireland, 97% of babies by the age of six months are on bottle feeds. Now this is an appalling situation, it really is. It's the worst, it's the most disturbing thing I've come across in the fluoride debate. 
Um, they had that information up to the forum on fluoridation, and it was just suppressed. That report was just taken out. They, they had secret meetings. They got rid of they, you know they got rid of minutes from meetings. All sorts of shady shenanigans. This was only discovered um, by in 2003 by the work through the work of Don Cawley through Freedom of Information. So you know they've known that they have known since 2001 absolutely definitively that Irish babies on a mass scale are being poisoned and they're doing nothing about it. They think it's okay to just, you know, they're, they're so concerned about having to save face because many of the dentists on, uh, involved in promoting world fluoridation, they've been doing it for 40 years, they don't want to admit that they're wrong. They don't, if, if you follow the money on this, you have to do that. They are getting a lot of money in for Irish taxpayers' money in research grants in, to, to the effectiveness of fluoride for the teeth. We are actually paying them to, to be in their position, to tell us that everything's fine, and to tell us that um, the other, the huge numbers of reports uh, showing that it's dangerous are wrong. You know, this is the kind of crap that's going on. So really, I think, you know, I won't go on for much longer. I think just to, to just, you know, you get very alarmed at um, what you're up against with this, because you really are up against major power. But you know, there's not very many people that the actual pro fluoridation lobby in number are very small. They're only a small number of people. They, they, they but they, they're all involved. They're very incestuous, and they have a lot of they have a lot of institutional power. But there's very very few of them, and we are trying to shine the light on them and name them, and that's what we need to start doing. So that they they try to hide the way they operate is they try and keep everything like to oh no the public we don't need a public debate on this. We've got committees on this. We've got the expert body on this. We can bureaucrats and technocrats. This is their job to deal with. It, they're not dealing with it. We have to take it on. You know, it should be their job, but they're not doing it. But they hide, and we have to not let them hide. We have to shine a light on them. You know, and I really urge you all to try and support Hoppers in continuing, continuing to keep the spotlight on them, and don't let them just go into like little, you know, reptiles under their stones. So keep on buying the magazine every two weeks. Uh, I mean, fair play to Niall Stokes, the editor. He's coming under a lot of pressure to stop this, and he hasn't succumbed. Um, you know, the other thing is, like, we have, you know, they're, they're up against a lot in this country. Just to say, I've actually just been speaking, my, the, the next issue of Hoppers that's coming out in two days actually takes us out of Ireland and looks at Ireland from outside Ireland through the eyes of campaigners in Canada and the States. And we are being carefully watched. We are the main battleground in the world at the moment for fluoride. And everybody's watching us, both the pro fluoridationists and the, the safe water people. And they're very excited by the campaign that's happening in Ireland, and we all should be, every, everybody here should be. I mean, there's so many people, where so many people for decades have been trying to stop this. And I mean, I'm only communicating what they are telling me and what I'm hearing from the current campaign. But the current campaign is very exciting because, of course, we have the help now of the internet, and they can't just dismiss us as a bunch of wackos because all anybody has to do is click on and read for 10 minutes, and they'll be, oh shit, this is actually alarming. This is. This is disturbing. But I mean, the Girl Against Fluoride campaign is amazing. A fair play to Ashton and her mum, you know, and everybody involved in that team. And the one thing, you know, I was talking to uh, Michael Connett, who runs Florida, uh, dot, the, the Florida, Action, what is it Florida, Florida Action Network in the States. And he was just saying, I mean, the, the, this campaign is so exciting because it's sexy. It's just sexy, basically. That's the bottom line. It's fun. You see people parading up and down Grafton Street half naked in the sunshine, all smiling and laughing in their bikinis. You know, the, the expert body of Florence and Health, the dentists, Dennis O'Malley and Joe Williams, they don't have a chance against that. They may have all the power, but they don't have a chance in PR terms. So this is a PR campaign, and we can win the PR campaign, and that is the only thing that will win it. Because I tell you, the institutional um, stubbornness about this is full on. They, all the authorities are in denial. They, they just don't want to take responsibility for this. I mean, I think they're crazy because if I was um, Minister Alex White, I'd go, oh, Jesus, this is getting...